Number 22, I can make my tongue do this weird thing. <laughs> I literally wrote as point number 22 as a fact about me that my tongue can do a weird thing. It's true. Do I do it? Do I do it for the people on YouTube? Do I immortalize the weird thing that my tongue does on YouTube for the Johnny Rogers show on episode number seven? Yeah, why not? All right, welcome back, everyone, to episode number seven of the Johnny Rogers Show. Uh, today is a solo podcast. No guests, no problem. Don't worry, I got you held down. We're going to start the timer here, and it might not be an hour like the usual podcast, but I'm going to give you something. Um, I had a guest just happen to fall ill, so I, I hope he gets well soon, but yeah. We're not going to stop. I'm not going to not put out an episode just because something happens. Uh, the winter outside, the cold weather is cracking the shit out of my hands. Going to have to go figure that out tomorrow. Right now, band-aids are what's fixing it. But it doesn't matter. We're still here. We're still doing the podcast. Um, I was kind of trying to think of what I was going to talk about uh going over i was like do i want to talk about what's happening in the news um but i had a better idea because this is still only episode seven and if you're new here thank you first of all uh but secondly i was like yeah why don't i just tell you guys more about myself you know really introduce really open up really introduce myself to you guys so you can get to know me a little bit better i hope you've been enjoying the interviews that's definitely been a fun thing that i've gotten to do since uh since after the first episode, um, but I stumbled across this old note because I've, I've done, I've done, I've tried my YouTube channel countless times before, but I think this podcast thing is where it's going to really stick because I get to just sit here and vent and I don't care who's watching. Um, but if you are, leave a comment down below. Appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I had this note where it was like 50 facts about me. I'm going to, if you're watching on YouTube, that's the benefit of watching on YouTube as well, because you're going to get to actually see what I wrote. I wrote this years ago, easily years ago. So we're going to go over it and I'm actually going to read it, uh, <clears throat> sorry, point by point and then go through it. And kind of um, just have a moment of reassessing where I'm at as well as I'm telling you guys these 50 facts that uh, I wrote about myself maybe two years ago at this point. I can also give you like little story or little branch off moments from each thing. If it pops up, we'll see. Uh, yeah, and in number one. The first ever comedy special I watched was Robin Williams live on Broadway. I was 11 and my uncle gave it to me as a gift. Little did I know, sorry, little did he know it would inspire me to become a stand-up comic. This is true. That's still a, that's still a basic fact about, about my life, about my history. Yeah, as soon as, uh, as soon as I got that Robin Williams live on Broadway DVD and I popped that shit into the DVD player, man, life changed at that moment. You're just like, God... I want, I want to do that. That looks fun. Can I do that as a job? It was never on those lists when we, when you were in school and they were, what was it? There was like career cruising. Is that what it is? Career cruiser. There were sites like that, that they would make you fill out all these questionnaires. And it was always something like fireworks technician. It was some weird, at least me. I don't know what other people got. Uh, and at number two, my favorite color is orange. Don't know why, but I've always loved bright colors ever since I was a kid. Yeah, still true. Love orange. Wouldn't really wear it per se, but I like the color. It's a nice color. Coming to number three, I listen to a lot of podcasts, like a lot. Everything from Joe Rogan Experience to Radio Lab to Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. Yeah, I still do listen to all of those podcasts. So, so that's still true. I've added some more. I've definitely added some more, like the Creative Imbalance with Sean Siriani. Go listen to that podcast. That's a good podcast. 
Uh, number four, I got my first job when I was 14 and I worked as a fry cook at a racetrack. It was cool. Got to eat all the fries I wanted and then watch race cars rip around a muddy track. Yeah, that was a pretty cool, pretty cool job to have as a 14 year old boy. Just get to see these insane rally cars just ripping around this track in between bites of poutine. It was a good job. And at number five, when I was 10 years old, I entered into a talent competition at school and chose to do stand-up comedy. It was terrible street jokes, but hey, I was 10. <laughs> this is true. This was a this is still a traumatic memory that has been burned into my mind of standing on that stage and just firing off these jokes that I had practiced and getting nothing. Guys, when I'm telling you I was getting nothing, I was getting nothing. And you know how I knew it sucked? Because the only person that was like forcing a laugh, which, you know, kudos to her, uh, applause to her, but it was a teacher's assistant. <laughs> and I was like, no, <laughs> it's not what I wanted. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we move on. Um... In number six, terrified of roller coasters. I mean, I've been on roller coasters, but it takes me working up a lot of courage to do it. This is still true. People die on roller coasters. Enough with this. Stop, stop saying that people don't when people are scared of roller coasters. I've seen the videos. That's enough for me to be like, mm -mm, not happening. I'm not doing it. But I have been on roller coasters. Man, I'm terrified every time. In number seven, my favorite book of all time is The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. It finally identified that strange force that pulls me away from productivity. Plus, it's a fast read, which is my favorite because of my weak attention span. This is all very true. I have the attention span of a goldfish. Maybe. What? No. But War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Definitely recommend that book as well. Yeah, he talks about the thing I love in that book is he identifies it. He identifies that thing, that thing. He just he calls it resistance. And he the best part, though, is like he actually gives you advice on what to do, because a lot of these like self-help gurus, their whole thing is just like explaining like what the problem is or, or where you need to like focus on things, but they never tell you what to actually do. Same thing with the guys that tell you how to make money. They never tell you how they made their money ever, ever <laughs> really look at that next time. But going back to this, he identifies it as resistance. And he says, you should use that feeling as like a compass. Whenever you get that feeling where you're like, Oh, I, I don't really know if I want to, you know, go to the gym right now. I got this. They do it. That's the compass telling you that's the thing you got to accomplish. That's the thing you have to go do because then you'll feel 10 times better because not only did you overcome the thing that you didn't want to do, but you're now you're going to get the results of the good thing. Isn't that weird how we like really don't want to do things that are good for us? I find that strange. I mean, I'm, a, I'm definitely done that myself. Can't, cannot say that I'm a victim there. In a number eight, uh, the first instrument I ever played was a trumpet, but I couldn't get my lips to my purse small enough, so I had to switch to baritone. True. Both sucked. Both sucked. I hate brass instruments. I don't like, I mean, I like listening to them. I hate playing them. But I didn't like anything else in music class. Guitar was cool. I liked learning guitar, but I had to take that outside of school. They weren't, they weren't offering that shit in my school. It was not happening. I always pick baritone. I'll tell you why. It's because there's just three notes. There's just three things to hit. And I was like, that is the least complicated. Let's go. I'd write in the book, one, two, three, three, two, one, whatever the pattern was. So I didn't have to read the music. It was great. Good times. <laughs> and number nine, music class instruments aside, I really wanted to learn guitar. So my first guitar was a Simon Sunburst. It's a basic guitar, but I thought it looked cool. I had to think it looked cool. And it was super cheap. I think that's why I actually ended up getting it. 10. I love video games. Any video game. Once I get the proper equipment as well, I will start streaming on Twitch. So watch out for that. Yeah, you better watch out for my Twitch stream. Not coming. I don't know what. I haven't been on I haven't been on Twitch in probably easily a year. I do still love video games. I just don't make the time for them. I'd rather be podcasting, like doing this right now. Uh 11. My favorite board game what my favorite board game has to be Catan. I even got an app on my phone so I can play it more. This is still true, but don't play it really that much anymore on my phone. <laughs> I still love Catan. Catan is great. My only beef with Catan is you need three people to play it. That's so odd. That's so odd. Why three? Figure this out, Catan. 
put out a two-person version or a one-person version. <laughs> no, I don't know. Solitaire Catan. I don't know if we could do that. Number 12, my favorite TV show on Netflix that I could watch over and over again has to be Haunting of Hill House. It's one of those shows that you can see something new every time. This is still true. I do believe that you can see something new every time that you watch Haunting of Hill House. Wouldn't say it's my favorite show anymore, though. Favorite show now, Squid Game. Squid Game took that over. In fact, let me just change that right now. This is facts about me. We're updating it. Squid Games. If you're watching on YouTube, you just watched the update live. Congrats to you. Leave a comment down below. <laughs> uh, I love calls to action. Number 13, I have three tattoos, all of them on my left arm. One says YOLO because sometimes you're 18 and have $100. Uh, that's the short of it. The one on my shoulder says family and has my mom, dad's brother's birthday. Did I just dox my family? God damn it. I just won't show you the tattoo. That's fine. And lastly, I have one more above my elbow that is the logo for a tattoo company called Ink and Water, and it's infused with a treble clef because the tattoo was free as long as I donated to the Canadian Music Therapy Trust Fund, which I did happily because I looked into it, and it's actually a great charity. Look into the Canadian Music Therapy Trust Fund. Very cool what they're doing. You're using the music, man. Number 14, my favorite place to perform stand-up comedy has to be the Underground Cafe 420 which is makes me sad because they had to close due to COVID because COVID sucks. And I will definitely, I lived with the owner of the underground cafe for 20 puff mama. So I definitely have to have her on the podcast. Uh, Cause I did a podcast with her for a, a while. So I think, I think she'll be down. I think so. We'll have to get her on. It's common club in Toronto and it is the dopest place ever pun intended. <laughs> Uh, I like my puns. I like my puns. Dopest place ever. We comedy club. And we're moving on. Number 15. I used to have blonde hair as a kid. And then it just gradually changed to dirty blonde to brown. And then this color. This is true. I had bleach blonde hair as a child. Strange. Life is weird. Number 16. My dream car is a cross between. I wouldn't say a cross. I would say either or. Mustang and the Scion FRS. I just love them both so much. Yeah, I love Mustangs. I love Mustangs ever since I was a kid. That's a sick car. It's fucking. Uh, but Scion FRS, there's just something about that. I don't know why that one sticks with me also. 17, my whole family is interested in cars. And perhaps the only thing I know how to do is change a tire if I'm patient. This is still true. I can check my oil. I can check tire pressure. I can change a tire if I have to. I'd rather call someone. You know? I don't know. 18. I sleep like a rock. The moment I'm tired, it's lights out for me, which made math class super difficult. It was helpful, though, because my childhood home was up the street from a train track. And all night you could hear trains shaking the house while the lady over the intercom announced the arrival times. So this is true. Obviously, this is just a basic fact of the history of me. There was literally a train station just down the street from the house. And you could hear like new train going westbound arriving over and over and over again for like every once every hour and like midnight eastbound eastbound of cornwall and rhyming it was fuck, just echoing in the distance and then the sometimes as the trains were going by, like right by the uh picture frames would shake on the side of the on the wall it was crazy so i had to like i guess i grew up sleeping through noise and that's what makes it easier for me to sleep. Uh, I don't know if that helps you or not, but uh, hey, here we are. Number 19, I don't drink often, but my favorite beer is Miller Genuine Draft. It's probably just because I like telling the bartender one MGD, please. <laughs> it does. It makes it feel like a special code word. That is true. I do like MGDs. Number 20, I used to have really long hair when I was in high school. I looked like a fifth member of the Beatles. What are, what are these jokes here? Don't know why I thought having wings was cool, but definitely never saw myself cutting it off. That's true. It's weird. Different phases in your life. You have to just like maybe go do this right now. Just look at yourself in the mirror and just be like not even imagining. You can't even imagine what you're going to look like. Even if you use those like apps that make you look older. But is that accurate? I don't really know. But I remember like having long hair as a kid and being like, I'm never going to cut this. This is what I have for it. And then just boom, short hair all of a sudden. Here we are. And then I had long hair again because COVID. 
and barbershops were illegal. And now it's short hair again. So I don't know what I'm saying. Number 21, favorite superhero is Deadpool, 100%. It's cool to see an R-rated superhero. I just wrote hero there and just added that in. But yeah, Deadpool is amazing. It's, it, it was the perfect release that we needed, I think, when it comes to like superhero movies. If you're a fan of superhero movies, if not, then you can just skip this part right here. But um, Deadpool was the perfect release to kind of break that fourth wall and kind of hit on all of the cheesy shit that all of the other superhero movies were doing before that. And then it's done it since then even too with all of the other Deadpool movies as well. So um, I want more collabs. I want more Deadpool X-Men collabs, but it's just the nerd side of me tweaking out. I was on top 10 nerd for a reason, ladies and gentlemen, top 10 gaming as well. Do not forget number 22. I can make my tongue do this weird thing. <laughs> I literally wrote as point number 22 as a fact about me that my tongue can do a weird thing. It's true. Do I do it? Do I do it for the people on YouTube? Do I immortalize the weird thing that my tongue does on YouTube for the Johnny Rogers show on episode number seven? Yeah, why not? Let's see if we, yeah, well, I guess I can just zoom it in. There, there you go, you animals. Are you happy? <laughs> Are you happy with that? <laughs> I don't know why I'm putting it on you. You're like, we feel violated. Why would you do that to us? I'm just sitting here trying to watch this podcast that I thought was about motiv motivation and growth. And here he is wiggling his tongue on point number 22. But into point number 23, here we go. When I started high school, I thought I was going to be going to university to become a veterinarian. This is true. However, my guidance counselor said, not with those grades. That's something they actually said. <laughs> I said, I'd really like to be a veterinarian because I like working with animals. Or I like animals. And I figure that's a good fit. Seems like a pretty, pretty safe assumption, right? If I like animals. That's the thing to do. You want to help animals? I mean, I didn't really think about the part where they got to put them down. That sucks. Can somebody else do that? She was like, no, not with those grades. You, good luck. Change course now. I mean, maybe in hindsight, that was good of her to say. <laughs> Imagine I'm out here still chasing the veterinarian dream. <laughs> Number 24. Alternatively, I also dreamed of being a wrestler for the WWE. So, yeah, so there's that, too. I watched documentaries, read books on it, and, of course, tuned into Monday Night Raw every week. My brother and I even convinced my dad to buy us a trampoline so we could practice our skills. This is true. This is all true. I, uh, yeah, which actually brings me to my next point. Number 25, I've broken one bone in my life. It was my ulna on my left arm, and it happened to be when I lifted my little brother over my head in spectacular wrestling fashion. But when I lost my footing because, you know, I'm standing on a trampoline, all of his body weight came crashing down on my arm and snap, crackle, pop, I was in a cast. <laughs> Number 26, even with breaking my arm, I still wanted to be a wrestler and actually attended a great school in Ottawa to learn the ropes. Again, pun intended. However, my body was not prepared for the amount of repeated damage and endless hours of commuting an hour and a half each way just to get the snot kicked out of me. This made me tap out on the dream and just recognize that I could be a fan of something without needing to do it. Um, yeah, so that was a big life lesson there where I was like, I actually like tried. I did the thing. I tried it. I was like, I, uh, it seems insane to want to do this, to want to be a wrestler, but I'm going to still tr try to do it. And I went to lessons. I went to a few of lessons. I did, I did a lot. I, I did it for a few months. I'll say that <laughs> enough that I was like, yeah, it's not for me, not for me. I'm tapping out. And it's not like, Oh, you could have pushed, you could have pushed through. Hmm. I don't have the body to be a wrestler. If I were a wrestler, and you were in the nosebleeds. You'd be like, is Hulk, is Hulk Hogan fighting a ghost right now? What's, what's happening? Who's there? Number 27, police foundations. Hmm. From there, I went to college to be a police officer. 
I was really looking for that dream job, but graduating so young had its drawbacks that even my professors discouraged us from applying to police forces until we got life experience, as they put it, under our belt. Sure, some people were successful out of college, but most had to dedicate every fiber of their being to it, and I just wasn't ready to make that commitment at that time. It's true. I was like, yeah, I went to school to be a cop is more so like a backup. And I think I had that attitude about it the whole time, which means like you're not really going to pursue it. If you're viewing something in your life as like a backup, you can't be upset when it doesn't like move forward. So when you don't get anything on it, if you're not adding to it, if you're not doing anything about it. Number 28, charity. Uh, one thing I realized though, from attempting at building a flashy resume for policing was that I actually really enjoyed volunteering in my community. When I came back to my hometown to work on that whole life experience thing, I actually found myself entertaining old folks homes and even serving food at a shelter. It was really rewarding. Yeah. Charity was one of the most rewarding things I, uh, I think I did in my life thus far, just even like, just, yeah. I'll leave it at that. Even just going to those old folks homes and just doing these like shows. We, I think we played like board games and just, and just were there to entertain and just to like hang out and have fun. And I was doing it because I wanted to get this policing thing. I was like half, half trying, <laughs> you know, I think I was more so putting on a show for my parents. Like, look, I'm trying, I'm doing this. I'm going to go, <laughs> I'm going to go do some charity, but then I actually did it and I enjoyed it. So Number 29, victim services. Because of my attempts to build a policing resume, I actually got involved with a great organization called Victim Services. They assist families when they are in desperate need. I drove people to appointments, entertained kids while their parents handled matters with police, and met some really great people along the way. That's true. Victim services was a wild experience with that. When you the, the type of people, like literally victim services. You're dealing with victims of something very traumatic that's happened in their life. And uh, again, that was a, a really like great, I think, life experience of just helping and uh, listening to people when they're in, in like crisis or um, entertaining kids in that way too, to kind of distract them, perhaps if their parents are in that because kids, kids can sense that energy off their parents too, super easily. And they know what's going on without you even needing to say anything, right? So I think those services are super, super important. Um, funny story about when I was getting out of trying to become like a police officer. So now it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to tell you everything on the show here. I remember there was like, you would be on call for victim services. So they would just, um, they would have nights where like, if you got a call, like you had to go no matter what. And then there was like optional people, like people that were like fourth backup, whatever, just in case. And I guess one night, I, I think I was like the second backup or something. The first person who was like dedicated to do a call couldn't go. And they called me to come and I was at a bar. And I was like at a bar and had already drank a bit, definitely not driving anywhere in this condition. And I was like, <laughs> what do I say? <laughs> what do I say to this? this is this going to destroy my chance? I becoming a cop because I wanted to have a Friday out at the bar. And uh, I was just honest with them on the phone. I was just like, yeah, I'm a little tipsy. I don't think, I don't think I can help you right now. And then just apologized. And then they were cool with it. They actually gave me a really cool reference. So be honest. That's what I'm saying. Always be honest. Number 30, entrepreneur. A really good friend of mine approached me with this idea of starting a business, and I love the thought of not having a boss, so I leaped on the opportunity. It may not have worked out the way we wanted it to, but I don't regret a single decision. I learned how to build a customer database from scratch and read a lot of books on marketing that I'm sure will come in handy down the road. And they have. There are no bad decisions. Even in like taking the leap to start this business that didn't go, like I said, the way that we wanted it to go, it was still a great experience. I learned so much along the way. And uh, yeah, like the biggest thing I think from that is just really like taking those mistakes in stride and not just, uh, you know, just learning from them as much as you can. And just really uh, being grateful for 
all of the, all, all the work that you're putting into anything, any, if you're pursuing any type of business, I think is all valuable. It's all going to come back and pay dividends somewhere down the line in your life. Um, because that's what we do as humans. We weirdly just like keep integrating stuff that we're learning into what we already know. And those create new ideas and create new skills as well. Uh, number 31, we're going in like a weird sports turn here. Las Vegas Knights fan. I was a Toronto Maple Leafs fan through and through, but man, they haven't won a Stanley Cup since 1967 or something like that. Literally longer than I've been alive. Then out of nowhere, this ragtag team called the Las Vegas Knights joins the NHL and boom, they make it all the way to the Stanley Cup finals in their first year. That's why I'm a fan. The Las Vegas Knights need a movie. They are the new Mighty Ducks. There needs to be a Las Vegas Knights movie. It's insane. They take like third stringers from, from all these different teams. Guys that were not getting the star spotlight on their teams. They put them together on the team alt and they make it to the finals. The first year they're together. Come on. You're telling me that's not a movie. They didn't win, but hey, that sets up the second movie. <laughs> it's perfect. I don't know why. I hope somebody's working on this. Number 32, Chicago Bears fan. Seems like my brain went to sports now <laughs> for these facts, so let's cover it. Number 33, Red Sox fan because of my Uncle Red. I love my Uncle Red. I miss him dearly. Um, he was a huge Red Sox fan, part of my um, family that's uh, from America, from Boston. Shout out to my American fam. I hope you're well. Number 34 is folding clothes. I guess there's a story about folding clothes. My Aunt Muriel, which is my um, it, which is my Uncle Red's wife, uh, taught me how to fold clothes. I, I'll, I'll never forget. They were down visiting. Um, I guess they were living in Florida at the time. Then every summer they would come uh, up to Canada to visit because it's hot as hell in Florida in the summer and a lot of people leave. <laughs> And they were here to visit and our laundry machines broke and we had to go to a laundromat. And I was just a kid and I remember her teaching me how to fold clothes. And that was a skill that actually paid off like huge. I ended up working in retail for seven years or something like that. So knowing how to fold clothes and knowing how to do that fast was, a, that was a big life skill. Big fact about me. I know how to clothe, I know how to fold clothes very well. Number 35, I don't know how this is relevant to anybody, but hey, it's the more you know. Number 35, meeting Rey Mysterio. Yeah, I met Rey Mysterio briefly, but it was it was uh, sick. If you don't know who Rey Mysterio is, uh, wrestler. Let me wrestler with the mask. Let me, let me pull him up. Let me pull him up. Oh, I'm struggling so hard here. Yeah, this guy, this guy. I met Rey Mysterio way back this is probably right around the time that eddie guerrero passed away um i was a kid went to a show and i made a a poster that just said something like rest in peace eddie and then after the show ray was headlining the show after the show he like called me he like kind of waved me over like this um and you know just said thank you grabbed the grab the sign and he autographed it um, and then gave it back to me, kind of gave me, um, you know, a handshake and then, and that was it. But it was a pretty, pretty wild experience to meet somebody that you watched, uh, on TV for so long. I think that was my first major, like, holy shit, like kind of celebrity experience was, uh, meeting Ray Mysterio, that wrestler, funny enough. Uh, number 36 almost died. Yeah. Yeah. That was wild. I think we were at a beach. I was at a beach with a bunch of people and we were driving, we're driving home. And I remember it was like a, it's a four-way stop. Was it a four-way stop? Yeah, it was a four-way stop. And I had pulled to a stop and then, no, no, it wasn't. No, no, no. Cause this guy was running a red. Sorry. It's regular, <laughs> regular intersection. Thank you for being patient while I work this out. It was a regular intersection and I'm going through the green and I happen to just look to my left like this because I learned that in driving school, you should always be looking left 
center, right, center, left, center, right, center all the time. And I kind of just glanced to my left and I see this truck just coming through the red light. He's not slowing down. You can tell when someone's slowing down because you'll notice the front of their bumper dips. If it dips like this, you can tell that that, that person's tapped their brakes, basically. That's their car going down. This guy was not, there was no dips, guys. There was no dips. He just kept going. And if I didn't slam on that gas, that would have been a gnarly T-bone. Would not have been good. It would not have just been me who, who died there. Uh, number 37, elephant ride. Yeah, that was, don't do that. Don't ride elephants. If you ever get the chance to, I don't recommend it. If you like animals, it's sad. Let me say that. Elephant doesn't look like it's having a good time. At least the place I went to. Hmm. Here's what you do. If you want to see elephants and you're somewhere, make sure when you search the elephant thing that you write like, uh, I don't know, conservation or something. Somewhere where they're treating them nice, okay? Don't just go to like some random elephant park or if it's just like offered as an extra. I wouldn't take that. It is not a pleasant experience. Number 38, I'm great at backgammon. I only learn by losing repeatedly to my friend Alex who has been playing his entire life. I'm just saying he's been playing his entire life. I don't even know if he has. But yeah, I love backgammon. Random, random fact about me. I absolutely love backgammon and I only, I, I, I only love it because I lost at it so many goddamn times. I lost at it so many times, <laughs> like a ridiculous amount guys, but it made me want to keep going so I could win. So that win would be so good. Number 39 goosebumps. I loved hearing scary stories as a kid. And as a result, I probably own every goosebump book ever made. Thanks for the memories. RL Stein. Yeah. I have a lot of goosebump books. A lot. If you watch some of my older uh, Inform Overload uh, videos where I had like the bookshelves, I think I had some of them on the bookshelf there too. Actually, I had a childhood friend. I'm trying to think who it was. Somebody, somebody I grew up with just gave, just gave them to me. It was like, hey, you want these books? He just had two boxes of just goosebump books. I was like, yeah, sure. I'm sure in a while they'll be worth some, but we'll see. Number 40, my first comedy show. Oh, my first comedy show I ever saw live was Dane Cook. True. It was in the nosebleeds, but hey, hell of a show. Dane Cook was uh, another wild, um, I would say like right around the time that I was like really liking comedy. But before I thought about like seriously doing comedy, I was all about Dane Cook. And Dane Cook was all comedy during that time as well um 41 i've worn an olympic medal it's true hometown hero conlon mccabe shout out conlon mccabe uh he won a medal for rowing and then he came back to celebrate uh, in brockville and actually he let me wear it let me try on a, uh, an olympic medal so that was cool i was like this thing's fucking heavy number 42 i hate winter uh just because i live in canada doesn't mean i'm immune to the colds i hate winter i loathe the cold it cracks the shit out of my hands i can't stand it i'd much rather be too hot than too cold any day uh number 43 i almost worked as a prison guard this is true can you imagine me as a prison guard i can't i passed the interview i passed the psychological evaluation and all i had to do was a few more tests before i had to decline the job offer because i didn't feel ready or prepared in life to do that i still I knew I still had a ton of untapped talent that I would, I would have felt like I had squandered it or something or regretted not, not pursuing something in entertainment later in life. And um, I knew that if I said yes to this job, it was going to require all of me. I wasn't going to be able to put the attention and the focus into doing this as a career. Like I, like I do and like I want to do um, like, Hey, now, uh, now I'm on Inform Overload and we're killing it right now. I think every video every day is getting like 100K views. And I, it's just wild that I get to do this for, for a job because I just didn't stop. I just kept pushing on it. And now I'm just, I can't stop. That's why I'm here right now, talking to you guys, doing a podcast. We're at 30 minutes, guys. We're doing super well. 
<laughs> this is like somebody's gonna be like, this is the longest intro ever. I haven't heard a single person if you're just popping in. Uh, number 44. Um, I love making people laugh. This one seems like an obvious fact about me because I'm a comedian, but uh, it should be mentioned that everyone longs for the laugh of the stranger. I've been doing it for as long as I can remember. In part, I think it's because I take safety in knowing that if I can make someone laugh, it generally means that they're relaxed and less likely to hurt me. <laughs> Not always the case, but it probably came from that. Um, what I do know, though, is... Uh, well, what did I write there? What I do know, though... Wow. Interesting. Interesting text here. I must have been baked when I wrote this. What I do know, though, I'm not a therapist. That's how I ended that. Let's just edit this live. But it probably came from that. Yeah, okay. Number 45, uh, French award winner. This is true. En français. Ask me to speak French today, and I could probably tell you what my name is. Uh, and then when you reply, I know how to say I don't understand French. However, in primary school, I graduated and won the award for best French student. And the only, uh, that only really happened as a result of me wanting to get better at French and then therefore asking for extra help to do so. Uh, another huge moment in my life of sucking at something, being absolutely terrible at French. I mean, I'm a kid. Uh, all of us sucked at it. None of us. <laughs> that was the great thing about my class. Great thing and bad thing, right? Because you are who you surround yourself with. So the whole class sucked at French. We all didn't care. We all were not paying attention. Um, but my parents were like, you're going to go in and you're going to ask for extra help if that means that you have to go in on your recess. That's what you're going to do. If you have to go there for lunch, that's what you're going to do. And you're going to get extra help so you can get better grades in French. Very adamant about that. They're not even French, which is weird. But they wanted me to do that. And it, it paid off. So that was like a big, like kind of light bulb moment in my head where I was like, oh, okay. All right. If I put in the extra work, I can, I can get better at things. <laughs> uh, which is funny to bring me into my next point. Number 46, procrastinator. Yes. I feel like everyone says that they procrastinate, but that is when I get some of my best work done. Truly. It, it's harder now because as a stand-up comic, you don't have a boss or a professor telling you when you have to get things done by. But in school, I uh, always amaze myself with what I could accomplish in such a short amount of time if I focused. Yeah, sometimes procrastination is good. But I think it gets confused, honestly. Like, I, like here's the thing. I could say that I am um, like, procrastinate i don't even know if i could do that i was trying to make the comparison of being like oh i you know film these podcasts and then i i get it up right away i guess that's the opposite of, of procrastinating is what i'm trying to say <laughs> what i was saying before though is like when i would procrastinate when i would put stuff off and i had a deadline i think that's where i was going i give myself a deadline yeah if i don't give myself a deadline um then i'm all over the place you know then i'll put it off forever if i don't give myself a deadline i will put that thing off forever you need to tell me when it has to be done by and i will do everything i, I can and everything in my power to get it done by that time so i do that to myself now and uh, as a result i don't procrastinate anymore that's not even a fact about me so god damn now we're at 49 facts about me man <laughs> number 47 hard working uh this is true i'm just gonna pat myself on the back here procrastinators aside when it comes down to it i work damn hard for what i want in life and uh when i was trying to move out of my parents house i had three jobs plus playing a comedy show all at the same time this is true i worked three serving jobs at the same time i didn't split into three people and go to all of those places but i i scheduled it accordingly you know like i told one place i'll work here monday tuesday wednesday I told another place i'll work here thursday friday i told another place i'll work here saturday sunday yes that's right i work seven days a week so i could get the fuck out of my parents house because if you're getting older and by older i mean like i don't know 20 21 you should probably try to just like move out with some friends find some other friends your age who are tired of being around their parents, nothing against your parents, you know, learn to love your parents as well. They're great. 
lots, lots to teach it. They're, you're a, you're a part of them, right? But um, you need to get out because that's where the real growing starts to happen. Because when you got to pay rent, that puts crunch time on you. It really does. It really makes you grow. <laughs> kind of gets rid of that procrastination thing there. Um, 48. I have one brother, one younger sibling named Nathan. Just had a birthday recently. Happy birthday, Nathan. If you're listening. Um, belated, I guess now. I wish you happy birthday on your birthday. You fuck. Uh, <laughs> he's five years younger than me. He's also uh, much more natural at being funny. This is still true. Um, but he doesn't care to have a career in that. Nathan is hilarious. Nathan could have his own show. hundred uh, percent. He drives transports and I want him to just like set up a camera in the cab and have him just talk to the camera this whole time. Uh, oh, and I put a note here. Uh, one time we actually worked together in an American Eagle store. This is true. The job sucked, but it was fun to work with my little brother. That was great. Great quitting story on that place too. I remember it was like the holidays. And if you work in retail, you know, if you work in any job, really, you know, the holidays, you do not take off the holidays. That is like number one, do not do this. Do not take off the holidays if you work in retail. That being said, I hadn't seen my grandparents in a very long time. And all I was asking for was, I think it was like Boxing Day. Might not have been Boxing Day. Yeah, I think it was Boxing Day, actually. Yeah, it was Boxing Day. I asked for Boxing Day off so that I could go home and see my grandparents. And I literally said to them, I don't know. This might be the last time that I see them. I don't know. Because I I, I honestly haven't seen them in so long. I have no idea what kind of state they're even in. I don't even know if they're going to be there. I might have to go see them like at the home or something. They might be that immobile. And this boss was just like, no, just straight up. She was like, no, didn't even, didn't even like look at the request that I filled out. I filled out a whole form. She said, no, you're not getting it. And I was like, well, okay, well, we think about it at least like, uh, like if I, you know, I'll come in tomorrow and maybe just, and just give it give it some thought uh because i i'm gonna go i'm not i'm not i'm not really asking you i'm just telling you that i'm i'm going on this day i know i'm done i'm done done asking i'm telling you this is what's happening and she still was like no (laughs) so i come in for my next shift and in my back pocket ladies and gentlemen i have my resignation letter that said that I will resign from this job effective immediately. I literally had this in my back pocket. And as I get up to her, where she's standing by the cash, and I was just like, so can I get boxing day off or like what's happening with that? She's, I told you, you're not getting it off. It's not happening. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I quit then. And I just pulled the envelope out of my back pocket, handed it over to her. I was like, this is my resignation letter. There you go. Thank you very much. And just walked straight out of there. And she had the audacity <laughs> to yell at me in front of customers and uh, the other staff, fellow employees, my brother, who's still wearing a fucking American Eagle badge. He said there, she's like, uh, don't even think about putting us on your resume. I was just like, what? I wasn't planning on it. What? <laughs> That is not a threat. It was a fun little add-on to that story. Uh, number 49, small town boy. This is true. I was born and raised in a small Ontario town called Brockville. Shout out. Uh, named after Sir Isaac Brock. I don't know why I put that. And during the winter time, it's quite possibly the most boring place on earth. This is still true. That's just my thoughts. Um, it's a great place to raise a family. Super safe, but definitely not a thriving environment for someone who wants to be in the entertainment business. This is true. Unless you love doing Shakespeare for senior citizens, that is not the spot. But honestly, this is old. I would say this is even dated here. Um, I think now with TikTok and with the the reach of the internet that some people have had, I think you can live fucking anywhere at this point. If you have if you have something, if you have a, even a little bit of an audience, I don't really think it matters where you live. People live everywhere and they're famous and they have huge audiences. People live all over the place. So I guess I'll change that fact up a little bit. Change that later. Number 50, my last meal. 
because uh, if you're watching this, you have 50, 50 facts about me. Uh, we're going to end it with my last meal. Uh, if I had to have one last meal for the rest of my life, uh, it would be a burrito. I love burritos. You can jam so much food into it. You have to use two hands while you're eating it, so it really keeps you in the moment. And you, you never see anyone really checking their phones while they're eating a burrito. This is true. Plus, if it was my last meal and I got the chair, I'd leave a nice little present in my pants. Poop. I'm talking about poop. That's 50 facts about me, guys. Kudos to you if you sat through that. My God. If you watched that whole thing and you've made it this far, you're a real one. Leave a comment down below. Maybe tap that like button. Let me know. I'll judge by the amount of likes on this video by the amount of people that made it to this point. Did I, did I harbor about the likes in the beginning? I don't know if I did. Either way, guys, we, we did 45 minutes. So that's, I think, somewhere close to that. We're, we're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it back around. We're going to have more guests on this podcast. I'm going to do more solo podcasts. They might have more direction. They might be weird like that one where I just go through a, a, a Word document. But, hey, that's the Johnny Rogers show. You came here for me, so I'm giving you what I am. I'm not trying to polish this up, make it any better than it. Uh... <laughs> I love how I'm like, I'm not trying to make this show better. No, that's not true. I am. I'm trying to make it better. But you know what I mean. I'm not being fake. I'm not trying to put out an image here. I'm not trying to clip out every pause and cut this thing down. Mm -mm. Unfiltered. Here we go. Don't forget to uh, hit that like button or uh, hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment. I said that already? Yeah, I said that already. All right. Don't forget to leave five-star review if you're on Apple Podcasts because I look at the anchor analytics and a lot of people are listening to me through Apple Music, which I find interesting. A lot of you have iPhones. Mm -mm. Leave immediately. I can't stand iPhone users. <laughs> I'm kidding. But get a new phone. For real. You shouldn't have. You should, they do bad things. Guys, that's the end of the podcast. I'm going to leave it right here. Until next time, stay classy. Or at least try. You know, try. You've been listening to The Johnny Rogers Show. New episodes air every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 